is WNBC for New York. And now, this is News for New York. Good evening, I'm Carol Jenkins with Ralph Penza. An emotional press conference reveals the details of Arthur Ashe's last moments. Perhaps it should not surprise us that as he lay dying, the tennis great raised his hand and gave the OK sign. The world had become familiar with Arthur Ashe's indomitable spirit. More from Julian Phillips. Arthur was so special. because of his quiet courage and selflessness, which made a lasting impact on those he touched. His last gesture to me earlier that day, as he went underwent more procedures, was simply like this. Even near death, no, Arthur no, Ashe was composed, right. always the gentleman, not defeated by AIDS, but breathing his last breath, wishing others with AIDS to live their lives as if there is hope for a cure. I don't want you to feel sorry for me. I've had a, you know, terrific life. I'm going to be around a lot longer. At New York Hospital, the attending physician and Donald Della's attorney and personal friend of over two decades spoke for the family in mourning. Arthur was the ultimate competitor in tennis and in life, said Jeannie Ash. It was AIDS-related pneumonia that Ash finally succumbed to 3.13 Saturday afternoon. A man that was symptom-free up until recently. Remarkably with his hectic schedule after taking up the banner for AIDS in addition to promoting his love for tennis. According to Dell, Ash's most gratifying accomplishment perhaps was not on the tennis courts. I think Arthur would have thought his greatest moment was speaking before the United Nations about AIDS. The winter sun casts long shadows over the Frederick Johnson tennis courts in Harlem, affectionately called the jungle. It was here that Ash practiced and conducted clinics for inner city kids. Today they played football, but it was Arthur Ashe they had on their minds. I felt happy because I see a black um, man playing tennis and making money and stuff like that, not on the streets. Arthur Ashe felt much as expected of the strong, and he lived up to those expectations 100-fold. But to suggest his impact might be felt just among young children, African Americans, and the tennis world, is a big mistake. Julian Phillips, News 4, New York. Next Tuesday, the body of Arthur Ashe will lie in state at the Capitol in Richmond, Virginia. Funeral services will be held Wednesday in Richmond. And here in New York, a memorial service will take place on Friday. Well, over the years, Arthur Ashe helped make it possible for hundreds of kids at the Harlem Tennis Center to learn the game he loved. But for most of them, he was more than a celebrity tennis player. He was an inspiration. Mike Morris has more. When Arthur Ashe passed away yesterday, just shy of his 50th year, he left behind a legacy of hope at the Harlem Tennis Center. Claude Cargill is the founder. He always wanted him to have an education. That was his big thing. Use, use tennis for an education. It was for these kids that the 1975 Wimbledon winner was a role model. For most, Arthur Ashe was a big presence in their lives. He was a fighter. He told us to um, go for what you want in life and don't let anything get you down. In 1985, I ran in Long Island's Arthur Ashe 10K road race. When the former tennis champ autographed my race number, he struck me as nothing if not a gentleman. The people that he helped here at the Harlem Tennis Center agree. Always Karen Buckholz is the executive director of the center. He was definitely a gentleman and, and a, an excellent role model for, for every child, not just for the minorities or black children, for everyone. Karen coaches these kids and would be the first to tell you that Arthur Ashe did more than just win silver cups and gold-plated trophies. He broke down barriers. This is a testimony of, to who he was as a person and, you know, what these kids are doing and what they'll be doing in their, in their lives in the future. You know, that's all because of him. He's opened up the doors for black and minority children in the sport, which, was, which for a long time had been closed. Sure, it's a cliche saying the world is a better place because of Arthur Ashe. But if our future is our kids, then it's true. And the people helping these kids always knew where to go in tough times. If we got into trouble, we'd go to Arthur. Reporting from Harlem, I'm Mike Morris, News for New York. Well, Arthur Ashe was so loved that his death is sending a shockwave through most of uh, the influential circles in our country and around the world. Among those touched by his passing, the Reverend Jesse Jackson. He says he'll remember Ashe most for his unrelenting support of human rights and human dignity. He used his spirit and his power to put light in dark places, to teach other youngsters to play tennis, to, to take down walls and, and to build bridges.
And President Clinton gave his reaction to the sad news as he and the First Lady walked home from church this morning. He was a friend of mine, and I'm very sad about him. Mayor Dinkins was a close friend. He, he says Ash's life was so fully lived and, quote, words cannot suffice to capture the sense of loss in knowing he is no longer among us. Arthur Ashe was a man of integrity and principle, a tennis champion who used his prominence and influence to educate against racial discrimination. Hours after his death because of AIDS yesterday, the bell tolled at Madison Square Garden for one of the sports legends of our time. Arthur Ashe was the world's number one ranked tennis player from 1968 to 1975. The national schoolboy champion from Richmond, Virginia, became the first black man to win at the U.S. Open as an amateur against professional Tom Ocker. Another watershed victory for Ashe when he became the first black man to win at Wimbledon, upsetting Jimmy Connors, who was in his prime. Neil Amder, sports editor of the New York Times, authored Ashe's biography. Arthur was a, a player who often played uh, the way he felt, a kind of controlled uh, elegance on the court, but at the same time, uh, someone who uh, always wanted to achieve higher. And he was a model which people could identify with and consistent all the way through as a player and a non-player, always doing more for people, always giving to the game. And that's something today with athletes who are more takers than givers, that Arthur really represented something and always stood for and committed on that level. The final 10 count for the late, great Arthur Ash. From civil rights to AIDS, Arthur Ashe epitomized class and courage. He was, in two words, a gentle man. And that's the Sunday Night Sports. Sal, on more than one occasion, you had an opportunity to meet and talk with Arthur Ashe, didn't you? I was struck by his intellect. He, he wasn't one to waste time and to make small talk. And uh, he, he showed a lot of respect for the press and the media and, uh, and a lot of patience with us, too, because we often ask silly questions. I don't know. We were talking a little bit. Uh, the first time I met Arthur Ashe, he didn't have a tennis racket in his hand. He had the Journal of Foreign Affairs, and he, he always stayed uh, uh, interested and, and, uh, and up to date on all of that, traveling to South Africa and around the world. Yes, and, and as an athlete, he wasn't one to talk about the old days. To him, being a tennis champion was fine, but he had other things on his agenda. And he moved on. Yes. All right, Sal, thank Thanks, you. Sal, very much. I have tried all day to try to figure out what I can say about this man, and I don't know what words I can say that you have not heard about Arthur Ashe and what a great man he was. Let me just ask you to go courtside. We'll spend a few moments talking tonight about the great Arthur Ashe. Arthur Ashe is a man who was a star on the court as well as off it. It was in the late 60s and early 70s that Arthur Ashe became one of the most popular figures in the world of tennis. In 75, he beat Jimmy Connors to win the Wimbledon title. After his playing days, as you know, he had health problems. He underwent open heart surgery, not once, but twice. Then he announced to the world in April of 1992 that he had gotten the AIDS virus as a result of a transfusion. Some of you heard that I had tested positive for HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. That is indeed the case. I will continue with those projects in progress and will certainly get involved with the AIDS crisis. As he had done with all of his battles, Arthur Ashe became very visible in his fight against AIDS through his Arthur Ashe Foundation. This is a man that made every attempt to educate people about AIDS. And like his entire life, he was generous towards those who were less fortunate. This is a man, folks, who earned the respect of everyone that he ever met. I think the way he handled himself under extreme pressure, not only in the last uh, nine months, but also before that. He was a black man in a white sport, and he was uh, such a graceful person, and on and off the court, and that's uh, something that so few athletes, I think, nowadays have. The way he handled his life and, and, uh, and his ability to, uh, to treat the good and the bad the same and actually go beyond that 
is pretty strong. This past December, Arthur Ashe wrote his own epitaph as to how he would like for us to remember him. I guess I tried to be a holistic athlete um, in the sense of not just stopping with what happened on the field or on the court. Ultimately, I guess I did not want to be known or remembered for just having hit tennis balls. Uh, and I don't think that will be the case. He did so much more than hit tennis balls. We thank you, Arthur, for your efforts to make it a better world for all of us.